All right. Hey, uh, first of all, I, I, I mentioned this. I, I want to say this before we get on to the game. I just want to congratulate uh, D'Angelo Russell. What a, what a great honor. We we're just talking in the locker room um, or in the coach's locker room about, you know, it just what wasn't too too long ago uh, when D'Angelo was here just a few years ago uh, when he was here uh, playing for Coach Mata. And uh, to now, I think, what was it, four or five years uh, to be an all-star uh, is a is such a special and cool thing uh, for him. So I know Buckeye Nation is proud of him. And when you think about how hard that is, we we should really be proud of him because that's a that's a that's a really special thing. So congratulations to D'Angelo. Um, the game today was um, a really uh, I, I think a complete game for us in in a lot of ways. Um, I was really proud of our. Uh, Older guys, and, and now when I'm when I'm talking about our older guys, I'm, I'm including our sophomores. Uh, obviously, Caleb gave us a great lift there offensively. I have a lot of respect for for Steve and this um, Rutgers team and how they play and how physical they play. And obviously, they have some of the best size in the league. Um, and uh, a, a guard in Geo Baker that has really controlled games and, and finished games. So. Um, I, I do think we probably benefited from, from them being a little bit fatigued, um, um, but uh, uh, it, was a, it was a good win. You mentioned Caleb. First play of the game, Geo drives right at him, and he takes a charge and not a block. Was that a big moment? I know there's a lot in the game, but if that goes the other way, the way the last couple of weeks have gone, that could maybe be a different game for Caleb. Yeah, and I thought clearly he was there. He's done a great job taking charges this year, um, but I thought that set a good tone. Uh, that's leadership, is is having the alertness to step up and make that play. When you're getting contributions, not just from him, but the way CJ played in the second half, Keyshawn throughout the game, is this kind of a picture of what this team, when it's operating the way you want it to, this is what this team can look like? Yeah, I, I think defensively we need to be better in some areas. Um, uh, I did not think we were as as alert or as active uh, defensively as we as we need to be. Um, and that, that's a concern for me. But I thought, uh, our, you know, obviously our shot making can cover up some things. And, and we made, you know, we made 13 threes. And uh, 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 I think our guys took great shots and our guys screened well. Um, and they took uh, the, the quality of shot was a high level quality shot. But, but uh, there's definitely some, some areas that uh, you, you pull out of this, say we, ne we need to be better moving forward. When you look at the last month, but especially the last two games, how does a team go from 19 turnovers to six turnovers in pretty much four days? Um, yeah, I think it's a byproduct of hopefully our guys are taking a little more, taking that a little more serious. Uh, having said that, playing on the road versus playing at home, you're playing a team that turns the opposition over versus a team that doesn't turn the opposition over at a, high, at a super high rate. Their defense is built a little bit differently. Some defenses like uh, Michigan State or Rutgers is built to contain, and they'll turn you over some, but they're not, that's not what they do. Uh, other defenses, just in how they play, turn you over a lot. So I, that, that's some of it as well. I'm not, I, I don't think we can sit back and say, hey, we've corrected our turnover issue. We, we haven't. Uh, I think we, took, we, we did some good things today, but we've we still got to do a better job. As far as the high shooting percentage, how much of that with this game in comparison to some of the other games is just the shots fell? And when in other games, it's just, they were good shots, they just didn't fall. A lot. A lot. You know, I, I think we did, we did look at some things um, in how they guarded us the first time uh, that we needed to do different offensively to, to free up some of our shooters. Um, and, and those were effective. Uh, but a lot of it is you know, kind of, are you making or are you missing? I, I just think I'll, I think I'll look back and say the quality of our shot was was as good as it's been, and we showed a little more patience. Caleb made his first six shots. I don't know if you glanced up at the scoring board, but he had 17 of your first 20 points to start the game. He's allowed to do that. <laughs> what's what what's going through your mind as you're seeing? You know, is he pouring a month worth of frustration into into making some outstanding offensive plays for over a 
15 minute stretch there. Just what uh, what's going through your mind and his mind at that point? I, I, I think he I kind of think he, he took what the defense gave him. I, obviously, he was on a roll there and, and we knew he was on a roll. And a lot of that was just within the flow of the offense. I thought he did a really good job in the second half not settling for some threes when he could have settled. He had one in the corner that he passed, uh, drove it and passed it to Keyshawn. I thought that was as good a play as any he made, uh, as crazy as that sounds. But yeah, he, he, you know, you've heard me in the, in, the, in the summer say, we need him to shoot threes. He has great touch. We've charted every shooting drill. He's, you know, top five or six in our, in our uh, team in terms of shooting drills. So we want him to continue to do that. But I also think he didn't settle. And defensively, uh, they play a little bit different then, you know, he, he was pretty active there. He got, he got touches there. Um, and they, they used their seven-footers and say, hey, we're going to play you one-on-one. Uh, not every team that we play is going to do that. And when teams trap and do other things, we'll have to adjust. The flip side of that, the rest of you guys were one for 11 to start the game. Were you concerned that he's not going to be able to sustain this or sustain us and some other people? In some regard, you were lucky he showed up for the game because – the rest of them down. were kind of struggling at the beginning. Yeah. You know, it's the ebbs and flows of games. Um, obviously, I didn't know we were one of 11, but I knew some other guys were struggling. I, the, really, what we're trying to evaluate right now is the quality of our shots. What is the quality of our shot? What is the quality of our shot? Are we getting the shot uh, every time? And then what's the quality? And then if they're good and, um, you know, high level, then, then we're fine. And I think we missed some open ones there. Chris, it seemed kind of likely that, you know, given the way this roster's built, that some of those younger guys were going to have to develop in a hurry. Is is Luther turning the corner now to where he can be someone you can count on more consistently? Did you anticipate that happening with him? I I, I think I did. Um, he's been pretty reliable for us uh, on both ends, with the exception of his turnovers today. Um, his shot making's been reliable. He's been pretty reliable defensively in terms of competing on that end. His help side defense has to get better, but every freshman does. But yeah, he's been one of those guys now that we're saying, okay, um, if he continues to compete on both ends and take good shots, um, he's going to be a fairly heavy minute guy. Did anything change offensively? I mean, obviously the ball is going down the last two or three games for him. Is it, you know, comfort for him getting better shots? Has anything changed specific to him on offense? Because the defense seemed pretty consistent all along. We run in a few more things for him, um, but I also think he's just, you know, figuring some things out a little bit. Uh, the game's slowing down for him probably a little bit in some ways. Uh, he's doing a really good job with that. Uh, the last couple of games, Caleb has been making his first move quicker, and it looks stronger. And and it, am I reading into that? Is no. it is it happening? Yeah. Why is that what you've been talking to him? Has it been sinking in? I just, he, the, he, people have not been going for his counter or for his um, his second or third move. They've just been walling up. So I think the, the decisiveness uh, in his moves are, are really, really important. He needs to be decisive. And if they counter and they wall you up, then he can kick it out. But uh, um, his step through and counters, that they just teams have not been going for that. They've just been walling him up. So he needs to post a score and, and be decisive in his move, and he did a great job of that today. And, and Rutgers is really thick and, yeah. and strong underneath. Was the three in the game plan? Making threes? Well, taking. Um, making threes was in the plan. Um, <laughs> we did feel like that uh, th th they really do a good job with – now they're big inside, but they're long, 6'4 point guard, 6'5 point guard coming off the bench. So they're long across the board. So we did feel like uh, we wanted to play inside out, but when we did that, there were going to be opportunities to shoot threes. Did I anticipate we'd make 13, though? But I do think, as I've said, that this team can struggle getting to the free throw line. We've got to be able to make three, shoot threes and make threes. You mentioned this about the summer. And going into the season, it seemed like Caleb Weston and CJ Jackson were kind of the guys that people look to as kind of the faces for this team. <laughs> and it's pretty rare that, or it hasn't happened this year, where you've seen two guys score uh, more than 15, more than 20 points at the same time. How important kind of is Caleb Weston and CJ Jackson to taking over games? And how could it kind of set the tone in the future here? Yeah, I, I mean, I think they need to be aggressive 
uh, offensively and whether that you know means in some cases taking over like like Caleb did today that I mean, that's what good players do uh, and he's a really good player I also think you know he is a sophomore but but uh, I think that's what that's what good players do and he, he showed great assertiveness you know I mean I, I think that we all get enamored with scoring and, and we're looking for how are guys playing the complete game and are, are they in CJ's case is he defending his position which I didn't think he did very well early he did better late um, is he leading the team defensively is Caleb leading the team defensively are they taking care of the ball are they rebounding like there's so many other elements they obviously scored the ball today but there are times when our guys have scored 11 points and you know, you might think he's struggling, and we're looking and evaluating him in film and saying, "Hey, listen, he's done a really, he did a really good job. They trapped Caleb, and he, but he rebound. You know, he had 11 rebounds against Nebraska. I thought it was a really effective game for him." When um, assertiveness is such an important part of the game, like it is of a player's game, like it is for Caleb, how has it been the last couple of games, sort of wanting him to be in that mode, but also managing his emotions so that he's not picking up you know, cheap fouls and getting the four or five when there's 10 minutes left in the second half? Well, um, you know, it's just been a lot of conversations and, and film work and uh, controlling what we can control in those areas. And as coaches, us trying to control the positions we're putting him in better, uh, doing a better job with that, and him doing a better job controlling his emotions and playing uh, with the kind of intelligence that we know he, he, he can play with. Um, and you know, managing frustrations uh, that, that naturally come from a young player whose um, teams play him very physically, and I think he's he's taken strides in that. But you know, it's not going to be the last time that he gets frustrated in a game with how teams are playing him. Has that been difficult for for both sides, for him and for you guys, to, you to coach him through, and for him to sort of you know bring bring his emotion level down a little bit? You'd have to ask him that if it's been difficult. Um, it's it's not been difficult. For, for us to coach him because he wants to he wants to get better in that. I mean, it's been some honest conversations, but he as I said, I love uh, guys that want to get better, and Caleb wants to get better, and um, he wants to be coached. And you know, not everybody's like that. He is. I love that about him. It's not to say we don't have some some of our moments, uh, but um, yeah, I love that about him. There were a couple of times that where maybe in the past that the ball was rolling around on the floor or this guy had the, ball, had the ball down low and Caleb didn't reach in. And I think maybe he's been bitten by that a couple of times. How much of your conversations have just been, listen, use your side, keep your hands up, and don't put yourself in those positions where you can get those ticky tack. We've had foul. those conversations. Perhaps that was a byproduct of him playing 38 minutes too. Kind of, t It's hard to bend down when you play 38 <laughs> minutes when you're that big. Chris, is it fair to say that um, – Many teams have challenged you to score from the outside, even to the point of, of using zones to that effect. Uh -huh. And uh, is it also fair to say that you're going to have to shoot better from out there? Or do you feel you're a good shooting team from out there when you get pressed like that? I do. I think we were fifth in the, in the league uh, in three-point percentage uh, going into this game. It's good, not, not great. Um, I, I do think we've got to shoot it a little bit better, but um, that's certainly been the game plan uh, for us. As, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago, the book is out on on us in terms of how to play Caleb. Now teams will play differently. Uh, you obviously have a better we had a better feel for how they would play us uh, going into this game because we had, because they had been successful up there. Uh, we'll see Penn State might play us entirely different, and some teams are just system teams. They're playing it exactly to their system, but um, we, we'll need to adjust to how the defense is played. Some teams are going to pack the paint. Some teams are going to say, Caleb, try to beat us one-on-one, -on -one. Um, and we'll need to make adjustments. Uh, Chris, there's a lot of ebbs and flows to seasons. You got in a little bit of a rut. Maybe you're coming out of it now. Can this – I know it's just one win, but there's some winnable games now. Uh, you sense that uh, this could be the spark, or is it just one? I, you know, I, I'm just looking, trying to evaluate um, respectfully. I know guys, you know, uh, look at uh, look at ahead and say this, these these are winnable. These these aren't win coaches. Don't look at that like that. Um, you know, coaches are are just they know everyone is going to be extremely challenging and difficult. Um, obviously, our, our game next game is against a team. We, you know, 
that beat us th was three and zero against us last year. So I think for us, really, it's, it's can we just keep getting better? Can we make adjustments that we need to? Can we get more contributions from more guys? Can our turnover rate improve? Those, those are the things we're really focusing on. The CJ, the difference if if Caleb goes for eighteen or twenty, and he brings his twenty along, then. That's a good formula. For I think it. I would put Key along with that. You know, those are those are three guys that. And Andre was good today. He just had a little bit, got in a foul trouble. But I think, um, you know, we need consistency out of a number of guys. I, I don't. I don't think this team. You can pin it on just one guy. Uh, 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 certainly, Caleb led the way offensively today. But I wouldn't want to pin any of our loss on a, on, on any particular guy or guys. It has to be a collective thing. Okay.